Hi, I'm Miles Skinner, a PhD candidate at the University of Alberta in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, we are here in my lab today, and I'm going to give you a brief tour of this lab, what we do, and why studying those things are really important and exciting. So we study here, we say polymer composite materials. These are used in piping and pumping systems, uh, for you know, pumping chemicals and various other liquids. Uh, energy storage is a very exciting field that we're branching into. Also used in automotive and aerospace applications. So polymer composites are a very exciting material to study right now. But uh, my research specifically is on flywheel energy storage systems. So I can show you, this is a flywheel that I made in this lab. Uh, it is cut out because I was doing, we were doing testing with it and we needed to sample the material, but ideally this would be just a full disc. It's about 10 centimeters tall and about, uh, you know, maybe five or six centimeters thick. It's made of uh, fiberglass reinforced epoxy. It's, uh, it's very heavy, so I'm not going to be holding it the whole time. The idea is, in a flywheel energy storage system, is this disc of material, this flywheel, would sit horizontally like that, and it would spin about, uh, you'd say, 30,000 or 40,000 or even 50,000 revolutions per minute or more. And in that spinning, in that motion, it stores energy. So uh, moving objects have energy, so we can add energy to the system, spin the flywheel, store that energy for a period of time, and then later on recover that energy later and use it to, say, power a house or uh, power a transit system, like a rail transit system, or anything else that we might need the energy for. You can think of this like a mechanical battery. Why I'm studying this and why a mechanical engineer might study this is because in that spinning, as this thing is sitting horizontally and spinning very quickly, it is under tremendous amounts of force. If you've ever uh, sat on a merry-go-round that's spinning very quickly, or um, you know, any, anything like that, any play equipment that spins around, you know that it tries to pull you outward, that you feel that outward pull as you're spinning around. And that uh, the flywheel experiences that force as well. And so this thing can be under tremendous amounts of load if it's going at, you know, say, 30,000 or 40,000 revolutions per minute. And so I study the material as it's under that much load. How does it deform? How does it behave? If it uh, has to operate, if the energy storage system needs to operate for say 10 years or 20 years, uh, what effect does being under that much load have on the system, on the expected lifetime of the system, the chance of failure, the safety, and we can make I can use that knowledge to make models to help people develop better and safer energy storage systems. So I will talk about how something like this is made in the lab, as well as all of our kind of filament wound samples and uh, what we can learn from those samples and why that's valuable. Like I said, this is a composite materials research lab. So, what kind of composites do we do? Well, we make fiber-reinforced filament-wound polymer composites, is the technical name. So what that means is we start with a resin like this. This is actually the resin we use. It's a two-part epoxy resin, similar to what you'd find at Canadian Tire or Home Depot. It's a plastic material mixed with a hardener, and then when it cures, it forms a hard, brittle plastic. And into this, we mix long fiber filaments. And we get them on creels like this. This is a carbon fiber creel that we get from the manufacturer. And it comes wound up like a spool of thread on this creel with what's called a toe. This is one toe. And each toe is made up of all these little fibers. And each fiber is actually uh, carbon. So this is a carbon fiber filament. So these are long strands of carbon. And uh, we mix these two together, and we wind them onto a mandrel in a filament winding process. And we get a tube sample that we can then use 
to make tests or to co conduct tests or you know, study the material. The samples look like this. This is a carbon fiber tube. And uh, we can test this for torsions. We can twist it. We can pull on this thing and see tensile strength. So we can pull on it. We can try and uh, crush it. So you can see how much force it takes to crush this sample. Or we can do any kinds of uh, studies that we want with this. So this is how we study these uh, composite materials. Uh, sometimes we use other composites also. This is a fiberglass composite, so it's very similar to the composite, the carbon fiber, but this is made of glass instead of carbon. And uh, here we can actually see, I don't know how well you can see that, but you can see these blue and green lines. Those are actual filaments, individual filaments that we've colored so we can actually study the different angles that these are wound on. We've attached these two aluminum, what's called tabs, these two aluminum tabs, so we can put this into a machine and we can get a better grip on it and test the uh, tube itself. So uh, these are the samples that we study. From here we can get material properties, we can model behavior, and we can use this to understand how we can build better structures, better uh, drive shafts, better pipes, better, uh, you know, all, all kinds of better things, better energy storage devices, uh, and just, yeah, study new materials in general. And that's what we do here. So here's a, another look at those tube samples that I was just showing you. You can see here, this is the uh, glass fiber one, and it's actually got a little strain gauge on it right there. And this is the carbon fiber. Here is the uh, epoxy matrix itself, or epoxy resin itself. So onto what I do specifically, and this is why I had to pick you guys up. These are also filament wound. You can see how the fibers, this is made of glass fiber here, so fiberglass. You can see how the fibers run around, you know, circularly around this, well, half disc. This was a full disc until we cut it in half. But these are the kinds of samples that I make. And this is actually half of a flywheel that's used for energy storage, and I'm studying this to make better energy storage systems. So I can make these samples just like the tubes are made. So fibers are wound on to a large mandrel, so the mandrel would go in here. Fibers are wound onto that to make this flywheel. And then I cut that in half and do tests on this material itself. So we can make this one, it's uh, five millimeters thick and 10-ish millimeters uh, from here to the center, or diameter, I guess, about 10 millimeters. Uh, we can also make very large flywheels, so this is much taller. This is much larger. You can see some of these samples that I've cut out, used for testing the material properties and understanding how this flywheel will behave for energy storage. So let me show you how we make these samples. And I'll show you the filament winder. Here is our tension machine. This is the first step to filament winding. You can see we have space for six creels. Right now there are four carbon fiber creels and two glass fiber creels. It's because uh, we were doing some experiments before uh, this whole shutdown. But I've set up this glass fiber creel with one toe coming out as a demonstration. So you can see how the toe runs across the machine and it comes out this hole here. It's guided into this resin bath. If we were actually making samples, this would be full of epoxy resin. And then it's guided, as it's guided over this drum, epoxy resin actually forms a film on this drum. And this drum rotates, you can see how it rotates. So the drum will pick up resin from the bath down here and uh, rotate over and actually cover the uh, toe in resin. So it gets covered in resin and then it comes out, it's guided by this comb. It comes across these uh, scientific storage boxes here and goes into this eye here. It's guided through this comb into this eye. Allows us to control the position of the fiber where it is laterally and where it is at an angle, like winding angle comes out here and uh, we'll roll over this 
and onto the mandrel. Right now there's a sample in here. This is a carbon fiber sample that we were making for a different project, not the flywheel project, but a different one. But here we can see how this machine, this big arm here, this big arm here would move back and forth uh, in front of the mandrel and wind material onto the mandrel and form this pipe. In this case, this is carbon fiber pipe, but you could imagine this as being uh, fiberglass or any other kind of exotic fiber. I mean, this is this very similar to how you might make, uh, you know, wind thread onto a bobbin. It's, it's a very similar process, just in our case, we're winding, uh, in this case, glass, or the demonstration in this case, or sorry, this is carbon, this is not glass, this is carbon, this is glass, as I was demonstrating, so this is uh, glass fiber or carbon fiber, we wind it on, and then we let this cure, and we will usually cure it in this big blue machine here. This big blue machine is actually an industrial oven, and this has a very large internal volume, and I'll show you that in a second. But that is the whole filament winding process. So now I've come to the other side of the machine. You can see that's the tensioner in the back, our scientific storage, and the toe coming across the lab, through the eye, and onto the sample. This is where one of the operators would stand. We can control the machine from here. We can control the machine from here as we need to. And then we'd usually have, like I would usually have an assistant or uh, be assisting someone else in operating this machine so we can operate it safely. And obviously at least two people are needed to take this out of the machine. And then we bring it over here to our oven. So I can show you this right now. I don't think there's anything in it. Give it a good tug. So this is our industrial oven. You can see it's got a space for the mandrel to sit. So one end of the mandrel would sit on this, this, uh, these set of rollers, and then there's another set of rollers in the back, back there. And we would put this, we would pull this cart out, put the mandrel on it, slide the whole cart back in, close the oven, and we can cure the sample at an elevated temperature, whatever we need. It's a stiff door. It's a very stiff door. Okay, so that is the filament winding process. By changing the shape of this mandrel, we can change the shape of our sample, whatever we want to make. So we can make pipes. The flywheel has a very thin mandrel, but it's very tall. Uh, other shape samples have other kinds of shapes. We can make any kind of shape that we choose, as long as we can get it into the machine. So that is how conduct, or that's how I make samples to conduct my research. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you found that uh, entertaining and learned a lot about what I do in this research lab, the Advanced Composite Materials Engineering Group. Uh, if you want to know more, you can check out our website right here. You can find out everything that we do and keep up to date on all of our, all of our projects. If you want to know more about Future Energy Systems at the University of Alberta, you can check out our website, uh, futureenergysystems.ca, you can find that right here, uh, or just watch more great content on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and have a nice day. Thank you so much for watching Future Energy Systems video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our exciting content. Check out the links below to our website and learning page where you can find activities, learning extension, and more. You can also sign up on the website for notifications for future videos and interactive opportunities. There's so much to learn as we explore our energy future.